Hey everyone, DW Rugs here, back again with another video. For this video, I'll be going through my entire rug setup, all of the tools I use, and just basically my general process of what it takes to make a rug and if you want to turn it into a business. So let's get started. So we'll start here with just a general layout of my studio. Um, this is the garage that I work in at the house I live in. Over here is kind of just my workbench. And then I have a shelf under here where I keep the tufting gun and some yarn and some other supplies. And then over here is the frame where I actually tuft. And then over here is where I store all of my yarn. And then I have these other buckets where I have the backing fabric as well as my tufting cloth in there. All right, so let's begin with the frame. I built this frame based off of a tutorial from the popular rug maker, I Make Rugs, AKA Julian, I believe is his name. Um, he has a PDF on how to build this exact frame on his website, and you can find all of the materials you need at Home Depot. And I even added this sawhorse at the bottom to elevate it a little bit so I wasn't straining my back as much. And it is very janky. I didn't build it as good as I possibly could. It was when I was first starting, so there's definitely some room for improvement. But it works for the time being. It makes rugs that are that can be about three feet by three feet. And then I just added these foam pieces on the back so that when you're tufting and you're applying pressure, it presses into the wall and doesn't make a whole lot of noise. So I will be linking that tutorial in the description below so that you can figure out exactly how to make this frame. So next up we have where I have all of my yarn. I highly recommend buying these Sterilite drawers. I bought them at Target. I believe they were like 10 bucks each and it's just a much easier way to keep your yarn organized, especially by color. Um, you know, I'm a little bit of a organizational freak. So I have them by, you know, Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, blue. And then we got some browns over here and some grays as well. And then I just have this extra tub for any other yarn that, you know, doesn't necessarily fit in these drawers. But yeah, I buy all of my yarn from my local craft stores, whether that be Michael's or Joanne or Hobby Lobby or whatever's near you, even Walmart has some. And so, yeah, they're relatively cheap and it's just, you know, it's a nice way to keep everything organized. And so another little organizational thing that I would recommend is getting a tub for your various tufting cloths and backing fabric as well, just to keep things further organized and everything has a place. Um, I have an influx of tufting cloth that I actually bought from someone who used to make rugs and then they stopped making it. So he gave me this entire tub and I haven't gone through all of it yet, luckily. Um, but yeah, I buy all of my my primary cloth from imakerugs.com. I buy it from Julian again. I think he has the cheapest price on the market. Um, correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I know there are other smaller rug makers as well who also sell tufting cloth. And then for my backing fabric, I just use felt, I use premium felt that I buy also at my local craft stores, Joanne Hobby Lobby, etc. And I believe it's $7.99 a yard, so relatively inexpensive. And then what I also recommend too is buying some non-slip backing if people ask for it, um, so that, you know, when people place their rugs, if it's not on a carpet or if they're not hanging it up on their wall, let's say they want it on their concrete floor, their wood floor, that way it doesn't slide all over the place because the felt by itself is relatively slippery. So this is just another small detail that I recommend having um, is a trash can because you're going to be throwing away a lot of the excess stuff that you cut off and all the yarn that you use that comes off at the end and after you vacuum and everything like that, there's going to be a lot of stuff that needs to be discarded so i highly recommend having a trash can it seems obvious obviously but you know just to add it in there good to have a trash can handy so this here is another interesting thing that i often get questions about this is actually how i put how my yarn gets fed through in order to make the rug um i'll put the yarn strands on here and here feed it through these little holes here and into the gun um, I make rugs, Julian, actually had a tutorial for this as well that I will link in the description on how to build. It's made out of PVC pipe and he had another document with all the different dimensions that you needed. I had to buy PVC cutters to actually make it happen. So there's another thing you would need to get. But yeah, once if I buy, let's say a roll of yarn that's like this, 
and it's all threaded through straight, then I will, you know, open a hole and then put it through here, loop it through, whatever. But sometimes, let's see if I can find an example here. Sometimes you will get yarn that is, you know, woven diagonally and it won't necessarily feed through if you stick it through the middle like that. So what I'll do there is I have these old toilet paper rolls. And what I'll show you, I'll add a little video of this in the side, is that I will put this, put it through this yarn threader <clears throat> and, you know, just turn the yarn into a little yarn cake and then you can place it on there and loop it through and it'll go through fine without getting caught. So before I move on to the tufting gun, just to go on that last point, here is the yarn uh, threader, I believe it's called. And this is what I was talking about with the toilet paper rolls. Put toilet paper roll on here, put the yarn through, and then you turn it and it'll turn it into a little cake. I also bought this at Michael's, I believe it was $30 or something like that. But I will also add this in the description as well if you would like to purchase one of those. So moving on, here is my tufting gun. It is a cut pile tufting gun that I've had for a little over a year. It's actually the second one I've had. I didn't take great care of my first one and it ended up breaking. Um, I purchased this from eBay and it shipped from China. There are a lot of sellers in China that sell tufting guns. And yeah, this has definitely seen better days. Unfortunately, I stepped on this wire one day and it kind of popped out. So I have this really janky duct tape job to kind of hold it together so that it still works, but it still works fine. I enjoy the reaction of this gun much more than the other guns that you may see on the market that kind of start up slowly and then turn off slowly. I'll give you an example of this one. It's a bit more rapid when you use it. So when I'm doing guns, or sorry, when I'm doing rugs that have a little bit more detail, such as the faces, it's nice to be able to, you know, really get in there and get those fine details at a more rapid pace so that you can maneuver the gun a little more easier. It's also much lighter than the other guns that they have on the market. And then I also have this little yarn threader that Julian sells when he, when you buy primary cloth from him. He also sells them individually, I believe, but that's usually where I get these. This one's pretty beat up. I've had it for a while, but um, it's just how you are able to get the yarn through stick it through the hole. Let's see if I can do it with one hand here. Put it through both of those holes just like this with the yarn attached. I'll attach an actual video. And then you just pull it through and your yarn will be fed through to your gun. Also for the tufting guns, I will be linking uh, an eBay link where you can buy the same gun that I had. But also keep in mind that there are guns available on Amazon as well. And I'm sure Alibaba and other sites have them. But more importantly, I'm going to link some of the smaller rug creators. I'll be linking their websites who actually make their own guns and they're in different colors as well. It's just so that, you know, you can support them and support smaller rug makers. And I believe a lot of them are shipped from the United States. So you don't have to wait, you know, over a month for it to ship from China. And also, as far as maintenance on the tufting gun goes, what I have here that I saw another creator do, I don't remember them, I'm sorry, I don't remember what their name was, but I buy a little makeup brush, I bought this at Target, <clears throat> and what I'll do is I will just brush out some of the, yarn, of the excess yarn and excess fluff that is stuck in the tufting gun, and it's a very easy way to get it out. And then once it's all cleaned up, what I will do is I have a little bottle of WD-40 that I will spray on. I know that there's actual oils that you could probably be using for these guns, and I need to get some eventually. But for the time being, I've been using the WD-40 to oil up the gun, and it's been working fine for me. So if anyone has any suggestions on oil to buy for the tufting gun, leave it in the comments below because I am not that aware of it and I would also like to learn. So let's move on to the tracing portion of making a rug. So I get a lot of questions about the projector that I bought. And to be honest, I don't remember the exact name of it, but I will link it in the description below along with everything else. Basically, I just searched up cheap projector 
that can connect to a computer or to an iPhone, whatever. And this one came up and I actually had to buy an adapter so that I can connect it to my laptop. Um, it wasn't that expensive overall, but again, you'll see the prices in the description. So that's the projector that I use. I will set it on this workbench here. And then another important piece is markers, which you know seems obvious you have to trace the rug, but you can actually buy fabric markers that are specific for fabric. And I have a thick one and then a couple other thin ones to get more fine details. And then what I also recommend is having a different colored one so that as you go through making the rug, what I recommend doing and what I find easiest is I'll go one color at a time. So if I have a rug that is black, white, red, and green, I'll start with black and I'll take the different colored marker and I'll mark all the points that are black just so that I remember and I don't have to keep referencing the photo to remember black is done. You move on to white, mark the white and so on. I just find it really useful. It helps me save time and I don't have to go back and forth looking at the picture, especially if I'm filming a video and I have to interrupt the video to look at the image again. And yeah, that's just a little useful tip for you. So once the tufting is done and you're ready to glue the back, what I buy is I have this, I believe it is a four gallon bucket, Roberts 3095 carpet adhesive. I get this at Home Depot. They also have a one gallon option, but the better bang for your buck is definitely the four gallon bucket. This has lasted me so long. It's still only like halfway used. I've probably done 50 rugs already. Haven't even gone through this bucket yet. And then I also buy a little, oh gosh, I wish I could remember the name of this tool, this knife to spread, what is this thing called? Putty knife? Is it a putty knife? So I also have this putty knife, I believe it's called. Sorry, tripping up on the name. I think that's what it's called. Anyways, bought it at Home Depot. It's a little plastic one. And this is just an easier way to, you know, grab the glue spread it onto the back and then when you're done just leave the excess on so that it doesn't stick to the top of the uh bucket and yeah i will also as always link this in the description i believe this was like four dollars or something like that there's also bigger ones available if you're working with bigger rugs i just find this size to be the easiest so that i can spread it evenly throughout so now that i'm working in a garage it's a bit easier but when i was working in my apartment previously if you would like to do this for yourself, I recommend getting a box fan. And so if you have multiple rugs that you need to work on, you need to finish them quickly for your customers. What I found works is when I was in the apartment, if I made a rug and I needed to have it done by the same day, while it's gluing, I would turn the box fan on at max power. I would leave it there for about three to four hours and it would already be dry. So you don't have to wait overnight. Now that I have the garage, it has nice ventilation, I don't really need a box fan anymore, but just another recommendation for you. If you are on a time crunch, I recommend getting a box fan. You can find cheap ones at Walmart or Target or anything like that. 10 to 20 bucks. I believe the one I had was about 20 bucks. So yeah, another good tip. So this isn't necessarily a video on how to make a rug. It's more about the equipment that I use and my setup and everything. But I feel that this is a very important point And I think that this can make a huge difference in your rugs because I know it made a big difference in mine once I started to do this. So, and I will have a video right here so that you can actually see it because I'm not working on a rug currently. But when it is done and it is dry and you are ready to put the backing fabric on, what I used to do and what I see a lot of people do is they will cut out the rug and then they will take it off and they will Put little slits in the excess fabric and then fold the fabric over right and then they will trace on whatever backing fabric they'll use and place that on the back that's fine i used to do that as well but i saw someone once they take the entire tufting cloth off and then they will place the backing fabric on top they will glue the entire thing over then they will flip it over and then they will cut just a little bit of the yarn off on the side and what that does, it has a much more strong hold from the cloth to the backing fabric. 
and it leaves a nice smooth finish as well. Rather than if you were to glue it on after you fold it, you may have some edges that weren't properly glued and it may come up. So again, I will show this in a video here so that you can see it. And I just, I, hi I feel like I had to mention that because I highly recommend doing that because once I did that, not only did it make the process of putting the backing fabric on much easier, but like I said, it provides for a much cleaner edge and you won't have a bunch of excess yarn falling off or even your backing fabric falling off because you don't want your customers to have a rug with the backing fabric actually coming off. So let's move on to when you have the backing on and the rug is basically done. The last thing you need to do is actually shave the rug and have a nice even finish over it. So I have a couple of tools that you can use to do that. One thing that I saw that someone recommended was they have these uh, dog grooming combs or whatever they are to get the hair off of animals. So I will do this usually before, I haven't shown this in a video yet, I probably should because I enjoy doing it, it's kind of satisfying. Before I even do the whole shaving process, there's a lot of actual pieces of yarn that are still sticking out of the, out of the rug. So you grab one of these and you just kind of shave down the rug and it helps get that excess yarn off. And it makes the shaving process a lot easier in the end too. And then as far as shaving goes, you kind of have two options here. So one, oh my gosh, one is this large sheep shearer that I bought on Amazon for about $80, I believe. It's very powerful and it's very loud. So if you use it, please wear headphones or ear protection because it's very loud and very obnoxious. Also make sure that if you're living with someone that it's okay to use this because it is very loud. And then there's also this guard that I got from Tuft the World. That is a company that I mentioned or a smaller rug creator that I mentioned that I would be putting in the description. They sell a lot of great product. I don't use this as much anymore just because of the noise factor and it's kind of intimidating to use to be honest. So make sure you're ready to use this if you really want to. What I now use are these, oh my gosh, what, now, what I now use are these smaller clippers that I also found, I believe from Tough the World, but I know other companies use it as well that you can find in the description. And it's a lot quieter and it's a lot less intimidating. And they also have a guard for it as well so that you can have a nice even finish. You don't have to worry about, you know, just eyeballing it. And what I also use those clippers for is sculpting, which is, let's say, let's go back to the example of a rug that is black, white, red, and green. And let's say you want it to be, have a really nice, even lines in between each color. You, what sculpting is, is you can tuft all the black, and then what you do is you flip the frame around, and you go in with those clippers, and I'll link a video in here. You go in with those clippers, and you just shave around the edges. And you have to be very careful that you don't cut your fabric because cutting your fabric is the worst thing ever. It happened to me once, and it's very difficult to deal with. So you just shave around the edges to make it a nice and smooth, even finish. And it makes a huge difference in your rugs overall. And that is a great tool for that. Again, it will be in the description. Another tool that I thought I should mention that I have are these little clippers that I found at Michael's. And so what I do Usually when I'm done tufting a section, there will be those little pieces of yarn sticking out that just from when you start a line, they'll be sticking out. And usually I just pull those out. It doesn't make a big difference. But some people like to actually snip them off and they don't want to pull them out. So this is a great tool to do that. They're very sharp and you can just cut all those excess yarn pieces off. They're also great for after you're done shaving and when you vacuum everything, if there are pieces that start to stick out due to the vacuuming, this is a great tool to get a very precise cut and get all those pieces off. So now the rug is all shaved and everything is pretty much done. The last thing you need to do is vacuum the rug, and get all that excess yarn and dust and everything off of the rug. So this is the vacuum that I use. It is a Shark Rocket Pro. Bought this at Target about a year ago. Um, it is one of the more expensive things that I have purchased. I believe it was about $250.
And I didn't just buy it for rugs, you know, I buy it to clean the house, etc. Kind of a clean freak. But this vacuum works great. And so if you're looking for a good vacuum and you have the money to purchase a $250 vacuum, I highly recommend not just the Shark Rocket Pro, but I think a Shark in general, or even if you want to get a Dyson, I'd love to have a Dyson, but those things are mad expensive. And I think Shark is a great cheaper alternative. Also, it has great extra accessories, such as this one that I use to get all of the extra yarn and stuff off of the frame after I finish a rug and I need to just clean up the area in general. It works really well. So there's a couple last few things that I should mention, especially if you're running a rug business. There are some supplies that you will need when it comes to shipping and handling. I don't have any on me currently because I just reordered some, but boxes are very important. For me, since this rug frame makes a maximum of three by three, I need a box that's at least 36 inches. So I will go on Uline. They sell boxes that are six by six by 36. Now I'll link them in the description and have a picture right here. They work great. I think it's 25, 25 boxes for 50 bucks or something like that. It'll be in the description. And then also what I recommend is I bought this little scale off of Amazon. And this is just to get an accurate weight when accurate. This is just to get an accurate weight when you are shipping your rugs. And yeah, I will link that in the description as well. So that is my rug tufting setup and all the supplies that I currently use. I will be moving on to a small Q and A section. I posted an Instagram story just seeing if anyone had any further questions. So I'll be moving on to that. And then also, if you have any further questions, even after this video, please leave them in the comments below because I would like to do a lot more Q&A videos and kind of interact with the people that watch these videos and help them out if they are pursuing a rug tufting business or just a rug tufting hobby in general. So thank you. All right, everyone. So for this part of the video, I'm going to be doing a small Q&A. Uh, I posted a little question box on my Instagram story, uh, just seeing if anyone had any further questions about the rug making process. So have you ever had a hole in your fabric and what to do if so? I have had a hole in my fabric one time. Uh, it was caused from me sculpting, you know, which is when you turn the rug around and then you go in with your shaver and get the finer details. And I, I accidentally tore a hole in the fabric and luckily it wasn't that big of a hole, but what I did is I just tufted as close as I possibly could to the hole without actually making the hole any bigger. And, you know, with two strands of yarn, the yarn comes through relatively thick. So, and in the end, when I shaved it, I just shaved it very evenly and, and you couldn't tell that the hole was even there and it didn't affect the rug at all. So hopefully that's the case for you. If it's a bigger hole, I honestly am not really sure what to do. I haven't been put in that situation yet and hopefully I won't. But if I ever do, maybe I will make a further video about it. The next question is, how do you know what kind of yarn to use? So I'm assuming they're asking, you know, what type of yarn. I use acrylic for the majority of the rugs. Um, and so um, once I'm in a position where I can, you know, afford to buy higher tier wool yarn, I would love to do so. But for convenience sake and for the time being, I use acrylic, it works perfectly fine. and still has a nice soft finish so yeah next question is how do you design realistic rugs such as the kanye west frank ocean and mac miller faces um so i could make this its own video and do the full process on my computer um, but for this i'll just give the shorter answer which is i will find a photo of whoever or whatever it is i want to do because this also includes cars if people send me photos of their cars which is what I've been doing lately and I will take the photo first put it in Photoshop and crop it and isolate it into one object and then I will take that photo and put it into Adobe Illustrator 
And Adobe Illustrator has a feature called Image Trace. And so when you use Image Trace, it has these preset options to do three colors, six colors, and 16 colors, I believe. And there's other presets in there as well, but those are the ones I typically use or low fidelity photo. That one's great as well. And nine times out of 10, once that operation is done, the colors will be separated perfectly essentially. And, and we can go from there, but there have been times where the colors don't come through correctly or things like that. And that's where you kind of just have to get creative and during the tracing process, you know, just trust the image that you have that you'll be able to figure out what colors go where. So next question is how much does it cost you to make a rug? Um, and this varies depending on what the actual design of the rug is. For example, if it's a more intricate rug that uses 10 to 15 different colors of yarn, then the cost is obviously going to be a lot more expensive. But on average, I would say the cost can be anywhere from 75 to $100. Kind of depends on, you know, you, you factor in many different things. It's not only the yarn price, but it's also how much you paid for the fabric, how much you're paying for the glue, how much you're paying for, you know, various supplies that you may use while making the rug. And I might make a separate video as well that has to deal with pricing, but that ultimately, ultimately affects the pricing as well. And if you're looking to have your own rug business, you know, I know pricing can be a very tricky thing to figure out and I still work with it every so often, but ultimately it depends on the design and the size of the rug that you're making. And a lot of people can get turned off if you tell them, you know, oh, 200 or $300 for a rug. But at the end of the day, you also have to factor in the labor that you're putting in because if you're spending upwards of six hours actually tufting it and then you have to glue it and then it dries overnight and then the next day you have to shave it and finish it, you know, a lot of things play into the price. So I may make that into a full video later on to kind of explain my personal process and how I've kind of figured that out. And the last question is, do you always use two strands of yarn? Typically, yes. Uh, as of lately, I've only been using two strands of yarn. I started out with one and I used to do the face rugs with one because I was worried about getting those super fine details. But I, I came to realize that using two does it just as well and it comes through even thicker. So, so yeah, I will typically just use two strands of yarn. I find it easier and I find that it won't slip out of the gun as much when it's feeding through. Sometimes if it's only one, it can easily slip through if it gets caught or something like that. But I haven't had any, I haven't had any issues of my two strands of yarn getting caught. So yeah. So thank you guys for watching this entire video. I hope this helps anyone that is looking to start making rugs or maybe if this was just entertaining for you to see my process, then that's great as well. And as always, I thank you guys for subscribing and supporting me. Um, we're at nearly 1300 subscribers now, which is insane. I never would have thought it would get that big, but anyways, I appreciate you guys and I will catch you on the next video. Also, before I go, if you guys have any further questions, feel free to lead it. Feel free to leave them in the comments. I may make further Q and A videos like this. And also, if you have any topics that you might be interested in that you want to see a full video on, feel free to comment those as well, and, and I can work on making those in the future. So, thank you.